I'm also a computer science student, so I go to the University of Leicester. I'm studying yeah, computer science and business management. So I'm going back to uni in September. But at Deloitte, what I'm really doing is, you know, when a company wants to move to the cloud, like everything is just stored in the cloud, like just anything to do with the cloud, that's what I'm doing. So helping them build the infrastructure to actually be able to move to the cloud. So if it's getting servers, sorting out their domains, in really like simplistic terms, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, because I looked at it and I wrote it down, cloud infrastructure and engineering junior developer. And I was like, I have no idea what that means <laughs> at all. <laughs> but so it's essentially like working with clients to migrate things onto yeah. the cloud, right? So what are some examples of what you would mig migrate onto the cloud, I guess? Um, so it's all about like business transformations, really. So if a company is moving, so let's say a company is like separating, it's, it's selling off a part of itself. So it would need to make that part be able to operate on its own. So it would need its own IT environment. So we would basically do that. So we would build the whole IT environment, like move that part of the company to the cloud on its own. So build its own little like island. So stuff like that. And you also do stuff like if a company just wants to move all their data as well, or recover data or anything to do with data in the cloud, we would do that. Got it. Okay. Still not quite sure I understand. I need to do some homework <laughs> on that. Um, but uh, but yeah, I guess I'll, we'll we'll get there. So obviously that's a role in the tech space, right? Which is where everyone seems to work now. So you know, have you wanted to work in tech for a long time, or was it just this role that popped up? Like, how did you think about that? And and do you love you know working in tech now? Um, yeah, I've wanted to work in tech since maybe it, my A levels. So. In year 12, I won't lie, I wanted to be a lawyer. Oh, wow. <laughs> I wanted to go into corporate law. I took English, computer science, and psychology. The computer science was just a, an add-on. I was like, oh, I can take this. I passed IT GCSE, so I'm going to take it. So I was really on law. Like, I had planned my life out, I promise you, from you know, year 12 all the way down to, like, five years after uni. Then I was studying computer science, and I was like, oh, I don't mind this. Then I just switched up. Then year 13, I was like, okay, I'm going to change to computer science at uni. And then I just ended up really liking it. Like since then, I've just been one of those people that just really like tech. Like I'm just so into it. But it was not what I thought I'd be doing. If you asked me this like four years ago, I did not think I'd be doing this. <laughs> I think so. you made a good decision. I don't know. I just, <laughs> I've not met you many times, but I feel like you're nicely suited to tech. And yeah, law is not as exciting as they make it seem on suits, I feel. Like yeah. no one ever says that, you know what I mean? <laughs> So yeah, I think you made a good good decision there. Well, you know, and this is just random off topic. Like I'm always seeing because sometimes I do help employers find you know computer scientists and stuff. So Python, SQL, Java, yeah. these are coding languages, right? Like how would yeah. you explain those in like layman's terms? Python is just it's just a language, a programming language. Just literally, just a programming language. You can use it for different things. Most times, people use it for like you know data analytics. So just analyzing data, using data to basically figure out some trend. So you, you use Python to do that. That's the most common thing for Python. Or you can use Python to make a game. It's, you can use Python for anything, really. Like, it's just a programming language. But MySQL is for databases. So you know how you have, like, really big databases of, like, loads of information? You're going to need to query through it. So it's um, structured query language. That's what SQL stands for. So you basically query through large databases. That's That's it. It's got it got that. it i'm learning i'm learning from you here this is why <laughs> i set this up just so i could learn about uh <laughs> computer science um okay so cool so it's a placement you're doing at deloitte in cloud infrastructure uh developer role um how about choosing to do a placement then so i wanted to ask you about this because um i think it can really improve your prospects of getting a graduate scheme and entry level role right like for me i applied to I think I got so many rejections when I applied for placements, maybe like 50 at least. Um, but then once I had a placement on my CV, I was able to get a graduate scheme pretty, pretty easily and actually got offered a role, you know, while I was on the placement. So it just seems to massively give you a boost. But what was it that made you decide to do a, a placement? Um, I wanted to do a placement like from way back just because I wanted the experience before I came out of uni. And my mom was always telling me that it's a great opportunity. You get to work when you come out of uni, you're not as stressed. Like, it will be easier for you to find a job. So I was like, okay, I'll just do this. But I'd say I really wanted to do it, like, for myself, just based on with tech, it's so wide. 
And I want to go into different parts of tech, like through my life, like my lifetime. So I was like, okay, I'll use this opportunity to just go into one aspect, see how it is, see if out of uni, this is what I want to come back to. Mm -hmm. This was really just for testing out, honestly, just to test out what (laughs) the tech industry is like, if it's for me, like, yeah, everything to do with that. Oh, wait, I can't hear you. I think you muted yourself. Oh, I'm on mute. I'm back now. Well, I was just saying now that you're, you've are you broken into tech, you can kind of move into whatever role that you you wanted, right? So, so yeah, talk to me about the application process. So what was it like? You know, was it, was it written application? Was it assessment center? And yeah, how did you, uh, how do you smash it in the end? How did you get through it? Um, I won't lie. I got a lot of rejections. Like I applied to IBM. I think I got to the game, the first stage, and they just rejected me. Like I submitted it. Then like two minutes later, I got my rejection. I was like, oh, wow. I applied to IBM as well. Very tough. (laughs) They they were brutal as well, because I remember that, um, they actually, so there was different stages of the day. Right. And they actually brought out all the food and like the, like fruit platter and everything. But you could only have it if you got through to the next stage. So they like brought all the food out and then they let everyone go home (laughs) if you didn't get through. It was like a really cruel thing to do. I don't have no idea why. But yeah, super competitive IBM. But yeah. yeah. (laughs) Like so hard. But I applied to a lot of places. And yeah, I really struggled with my applications, just with the tests and stuff like that. Like I can talk. But sitting down to do a test is just not me. Like, I don't like doing psychometric tests, but I can do them, but I don't like doing them. Like, I have some friends who enjoy them. It's really weird to me. Oof. I They're know. probably going to be psychopaths or something. <laughs> <in the> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of Deloitte, I didn't plan on actually applying to Deloitte because I wanted to work for a tech company like Accenture. That was my, that was my first okay. choice. Like, I really wanted to work there. And they took really long to get back to me. So my friend was like, you're really, I took a break from applications because you know, a lot of rejections, it takes a toll on you. So I was like, okay, I'm taking a break. So I took a break. Then my friend was like, well, I'm applying to Deloitte. You should do it. Like, just try it out. So I was like, okay, first I'll do it. Um, I managed to get through to the video interview phase. And then I managed to get an assessment center. And I was like, oh my gosh. (laughs) But my assessment center was, it was actually luck because they emailed me on Thursday saying, okay, you didn't get Deloitte Digital, but there's still business operations and we think that suits you more because of your background. So I was like, okay, yeah, I can do that assessment center for that. But then they, were, then they were like, oh no, there are no more spaces. And I was like, really? And I was like, no, no, there must be a space. There's one tomorrow. And I was, they were like, oh yeah, there actually is one tomorrow, but you cannot have an assessment center the next day. like." <laughs> You have to do this five minute presentation. You have your interview. Like there's a lot of preparation before the assessment center because the five minute um, presentation is like they give you a question about how you can improve something in Deloitte. So you actually have to research, go through all the documents on their website. So they were like, people don't do that in a day. And I was like, well, I can do it in a day. So, just um. <laughs> so I ended up, they ended up saying, OK, fine. We, they sent me a card, told me to come to London the next day. I promise you, <laughs> I panicked for like 20 minutes and I was like, oh no, you, you need this job. So you need to fix up. You have like six hours to get this presentation ready and actually know what you're talking about. It was literally like, how can you improve automation at Deloitte or something like that? And I was like, I don't know what you do <laughs> in terms of automation. I couldn't tell you that on a normal day. So I spent a few hours just going through it, um, just trying to prep. And I know that they do strength-based interviews. So one thing for me is that before any interview, I look at a company's values because I know that as long as I have one point that actually aligns with their values, they'll want you. They will, <laughs> they will want you. Like it just yeah. means like you suit their company. So just make sure you have like at least two or I try to have two, but if you're if you can't, then maybe one, just one point aligning. So I know Deloitte has something like integrity. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just made sure I had something to do, do with integrity. What, so what are the other values? Are you, have you have you forgotten them now? <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny, we'll make sure Deloitte doesn't see this. Don't worry. <laughs> I actually went through them yesterday because I was giving them to a friend. Like, oh, make sure you have something for this. Oh no, I forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah. So I did that, and then. I was like, okay, even if it, you know, when you just say it is, it is what it is. Like, I was like, if I don't get it, I don't get it. At least I went. 
and I wasn't paying for the trip. So I was like, <laughs> I'm not missing out on anything. So I went to the interview and the assessment center. So before I started, I told my the person doing my interview, like, I need to give you a heads up. I got this yesterday. So just take that into consideration when I'm presenting, like, do my interview, just be nice. <laughs> and the guy was like, oh, really? It's fine. He was trying to, like, just be nice because he knew it was wrong. <laughs> oh, really? He yeah. was like, yeah, it's easy. You'll, you'll do fine. It was, everyone else, like, I was with had had, like, a week, two weeks. So I was like, oh, no. And they were all talking about their presentations, and I was like, oh, bro. <laughs> I, I do love that, though, how you were just like, you know what? I'm going to bet on myself. I can do this in a couple of hours. Like, that's a, yeah. that showed a lot of confidence. That probably was a good sign for them, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why I got it. Not necessarily because my presentation was, like, anything amazing, just because I showed up. And, like, at the end, my interviewer was like, no, you did well. He even, like, walked me out. He, like he walked me out to like the front like oh we were just talking and I was like oh maybe but I made a massive mistake during my presentation you know how I said I went to apply to Accenture mm-hmm. Accenture on my in on my interview I was like oh is this why I want to go to Accenture and I was like oh <laughs> what and they still gave you the job yeah <laughs> <laughs> I think we can just end the podcast right here like anyone <laughs> if you can get the job at Deloitte and you put Accenture on the presentation then anyone can right. get a job right now right so right. I literally said it, and he, he definitely heard me say it. And I was just like, oh, so... Oh, you said it. You didn't, like, write it down. No, I said it to him. Cool. So I was hoping that mm, he didn't hear, but he heard. <laughs> and he, like, <laughs> laughed a bit, and I was like, no, I meant to do it. <laughs> but he, I think he ignored it. But um, that's just me for, like, interviews. I'd say that's why interviews are easier for me, because it's easier to just talk to someone, like, sell yourself. Mm. But with tests, they don't really know you. It's just based on what they think you've done. And yeah, that's, yeah, that's it with me for interviews. Yeah. Yeah. uh, Well, just jumping back as well to when you were looking for for roles and applying and stuff. I like how you you took a break and you paused. I think that's so important. Um, Some people don't feel like they they can do that. And I feel like that can help your application so much if you just say, you know what, I just need a bit of a breather. I'm going to stop now. Who knows if you hadn't have done that maybe your application to Deloitte is nowhere near as good do you know what I mean like it sometimes it's important to just have that rest I think um but but yeah I guess I wanted to to jump back so so you got your application you've got your interview did you do anything special do you think let's go to the presentation you know how did that go was there anything out of the ordinary you did there or any way because you did it in a very short period of time so that that must have been that must have been tough um for my um for my application I'd say the test probably went well for me they have this like immersive online test and I think with the whole test everything that I answered in the test it just went back to their values so if there was something like oh what would you do in this situation I was like oh their value says this so I just answered a question like that maybe I shouldn't be saying that on the podcast but (laughs) no that's a good point (laughs) So I just used to do that for all my applications and it just kind of worked. Like even with Accenture, it worked for me as well. Cause I ended up did, I ended up getting the assessment center for Accenture. I was like, Oh, I already have a job. So. You should have yeah, gone to their presentation and said Deloitte in the, in the presentation <laughs> there, just, just to tick back boxes. But um, for my interview, I say just making like eye contact, just making sure that I had explained everything in depth and also just always having a little add-on at the end. Like, oh, it would be better if I had done this or if I had added something like um, Deloitte could really, really benefit from this as well. And also giving them that, showing them the option as well. So they use something, some type of automation. I can't remember exactly what I said, but I just gave them like another better alternative one just different from what they were using and he was like oh that's really like cool that you you went out of your way to actually find this that we didn't know about this and I was like oh yeah that's good and also having like three questions to ask them because I think me asking him those questions at the end like really got him like excited because he was so happy to talk about it like he just seemed more interested what what kind of question did did you ask at the end I was just asking about they can't obviously tell you their clients, but just asking like the kind of work they do for their clients in terms of business operations. And I was asking him why he chose business operations because it's not really, a lot of people don't really pick 
business operations. It's like, why did he pick it and how it's benefited him this past few years? So just stuff like that. Nice. Yeah, I think that that's really cool because you want to have like an engaging conversation back and forth and have some good questions for them. I think the worst thing you can do is if they ask you if you've got any questions, you say no. That's yeah. like a red mark straight away. Like, And everyone really likes talking about themselves as well. So the easiest question to ask is like, you know, like you said, what projects do you work on? What's your favorite aspect to working at Deloitte? All that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, it sounds like you're you're very personable. So you, you probably uh, kind of smash the interviews quite easily, I, I guess, um, because of that. So you feel quite comfortable. But um, but yeah, no, that's good. I think you you clearly prepared well. So anyone who's looking to prepare for interviews, you got to look at the key values, haven't you? And yeah. align your answers to those because that's kind of what they're what they're looking for and ask really good, engaging questions as well. Yeah. And there was actually a group assessment as well. I feel like that was another good part for me because a lot of people come in there like I'm going against these people. Like these people, these are the people I'm competing against. But you, you shouldn't look at it that way at all. Because if you all do well, they will literally all hire you. Like everybody's getting hired. So I say don't go in there like trying to speak over somebody else. Don't go don't go in there too quiet because you're shy. Like just try your best to stand out, but not at the expense of somebody else. So I feel like there was someone on in my group that she just kept speaking over other people. Like you could tell that they were like, no, stop. But you could just do little stuff like, oh. I'll keep the time reminding everybody constantly oh we have to stick to the time or maybe just asking I know this answer but just agreeing with everything <laughs> <laughs> like if someone makes a point like just say mm, that's interesting like just stuff like that to show you're like a team player or I know this was a good one yeah this was a good one for me so whenever you see someone's not speaking, like always refer back to them, like, oh, do you have anything to say about this? Like, just so you, it shows that you actually pay attention to those around you and their feelings. So yeah, that's a good, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, people definitely make the mistake of going in and thinking, oh, I'll be really loud and like, you know, get in yeah. front of everyone's face so they can see me. Look, I'm, or like they try and be right about everything. And that's yeah. definitely not what they're looking for. They'd rather have someone who, to be like, oh, Dave, you've been really quiet. What What are your thoughts on this? Or, um, yeah, just kind of pulling the strings and seeing what everyone else thinks, like bringing people in. I always like to think, say things like, oh, uh, Jessica, I know you're an expert on this. This is your topic. What What do you think? What are your thoughts on, on that? And um, I think Jolla also mentioned the timekeeping as well. As like, yeah, so maybe that's your thing. You two <laughs> just like, we've got to keep the time, everyone. <laughs> yeah, I had mine just before Jolla. So I was like, Jola, you need to come for this. Like, you can get this job if this, because I'm Jola's really good at stuff like that. So I was like, Jola, you need to go for your assessment center. Like, once you got, I was like, you need to go because you can smash this, like for sure. Sure. And for anyone who doesn't know, Jola, we had on the previous podcast who, by the sounds of it, is your is your best friend that at Deloitte. <laughs> so you you two are killing it that you're both working together. Be honest, did you give some tips to each other? Like you you did yeah, it first. Yeah, you have right? That's what you friend. do. <laughs> yeah. Your friends definitely. Like, Jola is the one that made me apply to Deloitte. And then I had my assessment center first. I was like, Jola, you can do this. Like, let me tell you how to do this. Nice. But we got accepted on the same day, so. Oh, wow. That must have been a very, very happy day. Congrats. Yeah, we're excited. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah. No, I'm, I mean, I got a message from a candidate today who said that she'd always been really nervous and uh, hadn't networked ever in the past. And... She actually networked her way into getting an interview um, without, and the role had actually closed. So the deadline had closed. They said, oh, we've got enough applications. But she really engaged with someone who put her in touch with the hire manager, and she got kind of around the, the side door in a sense. Like, and I, I know what you've done is different, but it's this idea of having a network. So having other people that go through the application with you, they can like give you advice and you can all help each other. And I think like one thing everyone should be doing, maybe not everyone, but getting into groups so if there's three of you that all want to work in tech why not get together and like help people help each other search for roles help each other practice interviews so two of you can interview and one can kind of monitor you and, and kind of give feedback and stuff so you can yeah. go through the process together because otherwise it's just a solitary thing and I think most people when they hear me say that they think oh but it's competitive I've got to get this job if you think about it, if you get the job at Deloitte, you could then help Jolla get the job at Deloitte, you know? And it's just, now you've got a friend that works at Deloitte, so. 
Yeah. I, that like that's really important not to do applications for me I didn't want to do them myself so if I had a friend doing like Accenture I'd be like oh I'm doing this let's run this together and just do it together because there'll be something she knows that I don't know and something I know I could help her with so she like one of my friends was better at math and I'm not the best I know I said he computer science but <laughs> I don't like it <laughs> But she does. So I used to ask her, like, oh, I'm stuck on this. Like, do you know how to do this? Like, it's good to have people around you, even if you're not necessarily applying to the same role, but the same company still help each other. So. Sure, sure. And, and so you mentioned you went through quite a few rejections up until that point, getting the Deloitte role. Tell me what that was like, because I think um, the problem with what's happening now kind of with social media and people kind of celebrating their job opportunities yeah. is that they don't really mention that they got rejected from a load of those beforehand yeah. so some people kind of feel a little bit oh, like it's just me going through this but you've been super successful getting a really good role and you went through that process so I guess I kind of got two questions in my head what would you have told yourself now like looking back when you were going through those rejections we'll start with that one so what what kind of advice would you give yourself at that point um I'd say, yeah, the advice I gave myself this advice even back then. I was like, just <laughs> slow down. Like they're not closing. Just if you start early, start in September or even August if you're really trying to be early. So you have space to actually just think properly about okay, I want to apply here. Because don't when you do so many applications, you can only invest so much into those individual applications because you're gonna hear back from most of them. Have like 10 tests waiting for you, and then you're stuck. You're like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna do this? You're gonna end up messing up some because you've put too many at once and I did that at, a, at first and I lost out on a few companies because I did that so if I had just slowed down picked the companies I wanted to start with maybe five even three honestly waited a while picked another three like make a timeline and have a list like I had a list of like I had a placement book honestly because I was applying to so many companies I was getting confused I was like oh I need to find another role another job to apply to because I kept getting rejected because I wasn't doing my applications properly. And I tell the, all my friends, it's like, slow down and actually focus on applications. Don't just apply for the applying state because I promise you, they can tell when you do that. I don't know how, but they really can. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> so that was, yeah, that's the biggest advice. Just slow down and just try and pinpoint where you want to be. Even if you're confused about the kind of role you want, like I was confused. I only learned about um, tech consulting, what, in October? I had been applying to maybe more software engineering roles. Mm -hmm. I was like, mm, I want to try this. I want to apply for this as well. So I say just don't, just don't try and rush through it because you will be confused. That's it. Just don't rush. <laughs> and definitely go out and seek advice from people. Like I didn't really have that many people to seek advice from. So I went to my uni. I was like, oh, I went to their careers section. And they were like, oh, they actually were really helpful. Surprisingly, they really helped me in terms of my CV. And go to websites like, honestly, even Bright Network. I use their CV template. And I've given it to so many people because it's actually a good CV template. So I say just go out, look for information. Don't try and do everything based on your own knowledge as well. Like, you can only know so much. So, yeah, top two things for me that I've told myself back then. <laughs> yeah, I think that's really good advice. And they can definitely tell. I think I guess they are literally professionals. Like they literally yeah. do this for a living, you know what I mean? And they've been doing it for so many years. So they can tell who really um, wants to work there and who's done like yeah. a s specific application. And they can definitely tell when you like copy and paste in. And then yeah. I just feel like no one ever got a job when they copy and paste it. So yeah, yeah you definitely <laughs> got to make like a very specific tailored CV and cover letter or answers to the application. And really, it doesn't take that long if you if you just sort of put your mind to it. Um, so yeah, I just feel like it's really worthwhile doing that. The way I like to think of it is to not focus on the outcome of of yeah. your job search or, or anything really in life, but really just to focus on the process of doing it. So try to finish and say, this is an application that I'm really proud of. And like that is the benchmark for success. This is an interview that I'm really proud of. You just gotta go there and do your best because there's so many things that are outside of your control. So you can't really measure your success purely on, did you get the job or not? Because what if someone else you go next to like worked loads harder or um, they knew someone at the company or whatever, it's just unfair to measure yourself against that. So you should just focus on the, the process of doing it and doing something that you're really proud of when you send off the application. That's what yeah. I think. Like honestly, 
I wouldn't say there was anything special about my CV. Like, I look back at it and I'm like, there was nothing in it. So I feel like, don't be too hard on yourself. Like, oh, I don't have any experience. Like, I promise you. My experience was like, I helped at my mom's preschool. <laughs> and nice. um, I did like some random internship when I went back to Nigeria. Honestly, I say just try and sell yourself in the best way. Like, nothing is too small to put on your CV as well. Like, I used to put the most random stuff. I used to help one of my friends with her photography page. I put that, social media marketing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I used to talk about it. And I was like... Social media I marketing. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I used to help her run. And I did do it. It's just, it sounded better. Like, you can reword it. To, you can reword the truth. It's still the truth. But don't just put simple stuff like, okay, if you're part of a team. Like, let's say, okay, I, put, I, was, I play for the netball team. Um, in an interview, I spoke about it. I was like, I didn't want to play for the netball team, but they thought I was good. So I just put myself out there and I ended up like, well, getting to A team or something like that. Like you can make something sound better Mm -hmm. by just, you know, being truthful. Like don't try and come up with some fake experience because you're going to be stuck at the interview when they bring it up. And most times they sometimes do and you're going to be stuck. (laughs) Yeah. hundred percent. I mean, I feel like sometimes people demean their own experience, which is is sad because you you need that. And uh, you can definitely get jobs with no experience at all at these big firms, clearly. Um, (laughs) But like sometimes, you know, if you worked in retail, if you worked in, you know, Tesco, whatever, like those are difficult jobs where you learn a lot of customer service skills and things that are transferable to these big companies as well. So you really just got to back yourself, really, haven't you, with with what experience you do have? Um, so how about the role itself then now? Because maybe there's people listening and they're thinking, oh, I might want to work in tech consulting. I might want to work in, in cloud infrastructure engineering, which I'm still <laughs> understanding, but I have a better understanding than at the start of the podcast. Um, what is the role like? You know, um, what, what makes you, I'm, I'm going to assume you're, you're really good at it. So what makes you good at it? You know, how can someone, I guess, perform well in the role? Like what, what, what is that actually like on a day-to-day basis? Um, so when you apply to, the way it works is you apply to business operations. There are like four different breakdowns and cloud engineering is one of them under business operations. So I just applied to business operations in general. I and see. I didn't really get to pick which one I got into, but cloud was one of the ones I wanted to go into anyway. So you don't necessarily need to know anything. Let me, you don't need to know a thing about cloud <laughs> to get that job. That's it. You just need to have the skill set. And I'm always telling people that you do not need to know much about tech to go into a tech role. You can just go in with nothing. They train you. My training lasted three weeks. My friend, one of my friends that I'm working with, he doesn't know what the cloud is. We have the same job. (laughs) (laughs) Like, it sounds silly, but they train you. All they want is the skill set. They just want people that have the skill set that you're constantly willing to learn. Like, during my training... I had like three weeks of junior developer training. My training course was with a violinist. He had been a violinist for like the past six years. Came and said, I wanted to go into tech role. Applied, got the job. One of my friends never studied, never learned a programming language in her life. <laughs> so this training, this three weeks of training was the first time she'd ever done it. Like it's hard, but as long as you're willing to learn, you will, you'll be fine. So you don't, don't think that you need any specific skills in terms of like tech. You don't need technical skills. You just need to want to learn that's it so for me there was nothing I brought in I didn't bring in anything to do with the cloud in my CV (laughs) like I didn't I didn't even I don't even think I put down in my CV that I knew how to program I think I put like Python down not relevant so (laughs) honestly like just make your CV show that you're willing to learn and like you love learning literally because that's what all these tech companies want. They want people who are always going to be willing to stay agile. Like you're always trying to improve yourself. Just look for ways to, you know, better yourself. And then you're fine. You don't need to actually go out and fake that you know how to program, fake that you know everything about the cloud before you get this role. Like, I promise you, they don't care. (laughs) They're going to teach it to you anyway. Like Deloitte has so many, they offer you so many different ways to actually learn. So like, right now I'm trying to get my certification in Microsoft Azure. And I didn't need that before I came into the company. So that's just my, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's the great thing about tech as well. Like it's constantly moving and evolving. So it's not like a super historical thing where, you know, someone's been doing it for 20 years, so you'll never catch up. 
there's new new elements to it all the time you can go and learn how to code you can you can go onto github and practice you can learn python and yeah and, and they can teach you all the things that you need to know but but could, can you give us any insight into what it's like there i, I guess a lot of it's confidential but like i yeah. guess what you enjoy about the role or anything along those lines honestly the people um i can i can so do it deloitte is really people based like you just meet so many people that actually probably make the work better I want to necessarily know, say I know a lot about my project. My project is confusing. I am ju- I am learning. I promise you, I'm still learning about what exactly we're doing because the people I'm working with are older than me. So they probably, be- they're, they're more experienced than me. But like, they're still supportive. Like we literally have 30 minutes to do where we just chit chat. <laughs> like no work on this call. We're just going to talk. So that's why I really like to do it because they're really people based on, they actually try and make sure that everybody like feels included. Everyone's so willing to help you because they know, they don't expect you to know everything. And they're always telling us this, we don't expect you to know it. Like my uh, mentor said, I don't expect you to know anything. You're just here to learn at this point. Your first project is literally about you learning. So that's why I'd, I'm always telling my friends, like if I had to do it, <laughs> you'd have a swell time here. Like they're just so nice. <laughs> that's the word nice. So in terms of my project, I'm still learning about my project right now. I can't say too much because, yeah. But I'd say it's just a learning opportunity. Like, I've learned a lot about what it means to be on a project, like a cloud project. Or I've learned a lot about how servers work, um, can, racking, <laughs> so many random words. I literally just learned. Even me. <laughs> honestly, today, um, my friend and I made this massive Excel file because there's so many words like an acronyms that we don't know what they mean. So we need to go make a list of them and find out what they mean or ask like our manager, what do these words mean? So I promise it's, it's still, it's confusing, but they're really supportive. So I would get to a point where I'll understand this fully. I'd be able to, you know, be in this project like at a deeper level. Like right now I'm just doing stuff like Excel files, the plans, um, working on like the low level designs, just things like that. So nice. it's not too bad. Yeah, it sounds really exciting from, from what I understand. It sounds sounds really exciting. So how, how about, um, so I know you're passionate about uh, diversity and, and, and yeah. diversity in tech. There's a real diversity, <laughs> a real lack of diversity in tech. Um, so yeah, talk to me a little bit about that and maybe the, the thing that you have up and coming that, that you're building now. But yeah, any thoughts on your, your I guess, passion for, for that space? Um, I say tech has a long way to go before it's properly diverse. Like there's just not a lot of people in tech, like black people, Indian people, no, black people, especially, there's just not enough of us in tech. Like when I see who I'm working with, I'm like, wow, (laughs) there's not enough of us here. And especially younger people as well. You don't really find as many people wanting to actually apply to tech, into tech roles, Maybe they don't think that they can do it or they just keep getting rejected. Like, I also believe that it's not balanced. Like, it's not. Um, A lot of people already have opportunities. Their parents have helped them get this opportunity. They have good networks. Some people don't have the opportunity to actually have good networks. They don't have people around them that can give them good advice. And that's my biggest issue with tech. A lot of companies want people to apply. But where do you want to find these people to apply when it's not balanced like some people are just not educated on the opportunities available they don't know how to apply they don't even know some people don't even know that internships exist like but they would probably be amazing at tech roles or like Mm -hmm. the tech industry like they could probably do a lot in it so for me it's just like more companies need to go out maybe set up mentorship programs help the people then they'll come back and apply so in the long run it would benefit them but most of them are focused on, okay, we need to go find people that would apply to our company. But the people you want to go find, they don't know you exist. So how would they actually apply to your company? How would they know, oh, I actually want to apply to this company? So yeah, that's my biggest issue with like the tech industry. And in terms of representation, lacking. <laughs> Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and just just on that though Angela so from your perspective it's both a lack of awareness so yeah not knowing about the roles in tech and about some of the companies and the brands that are there but yeah. then also 
um, lack of opportunities to kind of get that support throughout the process. So if you're completely yeah. new to tech or maybe you're from a low socioeconomic background, you don't have those kind of networks to to learn about all of the the acronyms and yeah. stuff that you've been thrown out. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, the, the, we really need schemes to help people through those processes, right? So those are two two big issues, right? Right, that you see so far. Yeah, and I've I've gone out looking, and there are, but people just don't know they exist. And there's so many people, even diverse hires. Like I was sending it to my friend yesterday. I was like, this would really be good for you. Check them out, because you have all these big um, websites that help, but most of them don't really take into consideration. Like, okay, minorities. They, they're going to need more help, not just CV help. They're going to need to know, okay, why do I need to apply to this role? How can I apply to this role? Does this role suit me? Is that it's not a long shot. Like, they need more help, in my opinion. And there should be more support for them. So, for me, it's just, I say this at work as well. Like, I'm always like, yeah, there should be more done. Like, I know a lot of companies have, like, black action plans. And I really love that. Like I was looking at even Deloitte, I really like their black action plan. Like they're going out of their way to actually do something and be more inclusive. But yeah, so a lot could be done in the tech industry. Like it will reach that point maybe, but there's still a lot of stuff that companies need to do to educate people. They should be educating people as well on the roles, not just, you know, putting ads out there that this job is open. Like you should start young, like maybe speaking to your 12 students, your 13 students, first year students. When you go to unis, they show up for um, um, those freshers fairs. But just a bit more, maybe supporting students, because you have all these workers that are super smart. They could probably help students in so many different ways. Like um, I was part of this um, Google mentorship program for like six months. And I say that literally helped me in so many ways I started before COVID and it ended like maybe like last week but my mentor helped me in so many ways in terms of my business development personal development she gave me direction in terms of the industry like a lot of the stuff I learned is because of her like she was she'd say it's not but I'm gonna say it is <laughs> because when she she knows what's going on she can give you good advice and if more people had that opportunity to actually have that good advice, like I'm always screaming mentorship is so important, but people, there are no mentorship schemes that are really helping. More are coming out now, but before they weren't really, you really had to go out and look, network, and people are not going to reply on LinkedIn. You're not going to be able to just message somebody like, oh, can you be my mentor? Mm -hmm. you know, some people are not going to reply you. So stuff like that would really support more students in terms of being confused just understanding how the industry works, the kind of jobs they could apply for. Like my mentor is the one that literally pushed me towards like what I want to do like when I come out of uni. Like I didn't know it existed and I was telling her, oh, I want to do this in tech, but it's not real. And she was like, yeah, it is. That's my job. And I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> just, what, what's like, her name? I feel like we need to shout her out on here, to be honest. Her name is Fiona. <laughs> nice one. Shout out to you, Fiona, for uh, yeah, for doing some great mentoring. And what was the name of the the Google program? I need to shout them out. They're called. It's called Generating Genius. They basically support black uh, minorities, not just black people, actually. And it was a Google mentorship program. So they were working with Google to mentor. I think I can't remember how many of us there were, but we got two mentors. So I had a, another mentor, but he was really technical, so I got really confused when he was talking, but he was really good. Like he worked in, um, I think, Google Maps, like machine learning on that side. So it really sounds confusing. <laughs> but he was really like helpful as well in terms of just understanding, like he used to give me websites to go on how to program, to improve my skills. So yeah, it, people should check them out and apply when they have more like spaces to join their programs. I joined their, um, yeah, I joined their, I can't remember what the program was called. I can't remember what it was called. But I joined one of their programs, they messaged me on LinkedIn and yeah, they have great opportunities for minorities. They used to invite me for inside days. They used to give me, um, yeah, they, they could fast track you for some internship opportunities over summer. So people should check them out. 
Brilliant. Yeah, go go to check them out. Generating genius. That sounds really good. And uh, and head over to wearediverse.io as well. Simple yeah. plug in there because we've got lots of free resources as well. And and we'll have roles with some t- cool tech companies. And yeah, I really want to give especially tech companies the chance to engage directly with with our audience and our network and you know set up webinars and have networking opportunities yeah. and that kind of thing. Um, did you want to mention your your tech suite that you're building as well, or are you keeping that on the DL? I don't know. I've <laughs> mentioned it now, so. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, tech suite. You can say TBD. Pardon? You can say you know coming soon if you want. <laughs> well, I'm trying to speed it up. I'm just waiting for a few more replies, but um, you should ch- you guys should check tech suite out. It's techsuite.co on Instagram. It's just a guide to help students like know the opportunities available, then I'm going to introduce people like with the actual jobs. So I'm trying to get some people on my page. Like I found this guy who works at um, Facebook. He's a software engineer. He's going to come on my page. Um, I found someone that works at BT, software engineer at BT, because software engineer is the, is the first job I'm focusing on. So um, just different people. Like I'm just trying to show like the end goal. So you see, when you see black people excelling in tech, you're like, oh, I can do this. So just showing people that they're actually successful people who are making it in the industry. So like you can do it as well. So yeah, my page is just to also help direct people towards places that can help them like diverse <laughs> hires. There you go. <laughs> so yeah, head over to techsuite.co on Instagram. I really like your visuals. I'm very jealous of how you're doing some of this weird technology <laughs> yeah, stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'll tell you, it's easy. <laughs> All right, save that for offline. We don't want everyone to know. Rather, Alice, I won't look special when I copy you. Uh, okay, cool. I mean, this has been absolutely brilliant. Let's kind of wrap up. Do you have any final words, anything you want to share um, to kind of encourage your you know, fellow? I guess you're going to be going for your own graduate scheme, right, after this. Um, uh, after you. So I guess advice for yourself or just, yeah, any words of kind of encouragement or it could just be something you're you're taking through that you've now learned from your placement and you're ready for to go in the grad schemes um but yeah any kind of final words of wisdom um i say aim high don't limit yourself and sometimes you don't need to work for a massive firm you might be better off at like a startup or like a small to medium organization like people kind of dismiss them a lot but you can get a lot of skills from them and then come out and apply to like what a bigger firm but I feel like people shouldn't think that oh because they didn't get a job at one of these bigger like firms or like some Deloitte or some Google or something that oh they failed if you apply to a small firm I promise you the skill sets that you will get like I've been speaking to people at Deloitte and they always talk about how they used to work at other places before they came to Deloitte and the skills they got there you wouldn't be able to get it at all these bigger firms so I say don't disregard them look into them startups I promise you Startups as well. A lot of money to be made. <laughs> yeah, go get that back. It comes big. You were there from the beginning. You were what? An early adapter. So you too, you should look at different companies. Like don't just focus too much on the biggest ones because of the big names as well. So that's my advice. And yeah. For sure. Yeah. Beyonce said it best, you know, pay me an equity. Like that's what we <laughs> should be thinking. Go go work at these startups. Get some equity. Um Thanks so much, Angela. This has been really, really good. And uh, yeah, I always like to think if we could just help one person, then it's definitely worth it. And I'm sure we've done that today or you've done that today. So <laughs> yeah, I just want to really thank you for, for coming on here. It's been really cool. Thank you. It was really nice to be on here. Love diverse highs. Cool. We'll have you on again. We'll have you on again. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. All right. I'm going to pause it there.